So welcome to another podcast. So today we have the man himself from Carwell, very famous man. If you Google any car, he comes up top of your searches. Very annoying. If I turn on the <laughs> telly on, he's on there. If there's an advert on anything I watch on any program, he's on there. Matt Watson, and he's even here for the day. Oh, how you doing, Mark? You all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. So me and Matt have done a, a bit of work together on the Carwell drag races, which I'm sure most of you have seen. Very fun day. Um, but would ask Matt to talk all about that and where it came from. So to start with, why Carwell? Why Carwell? Um, because they <laughs> basically came to me. I was working at a place called Auto Express. It's an old school magazine, but we did, um, it's got a website as well. And we do uh, video reviews on YouTube. And I was in charge of the video content. And then Carwell made me an offer said, uh, um, what happens if we were to give you like some money to do all the things that you wanted to do? And you did the YouTube channel for us. And I was like, all right, why Auto Express? Hello, Carway. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you just bought. Basically, yes. Yeah, that's the way most things work, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, ten, ten is a tenner. <laughs> yeah, it was 20 quid, actually. But there we go. Uh, yeah, because Auto Express is like an established brand that people knew. It's uh, all the car manufacturers knew it. They'd like lend cars to Auto Express as a matter of course. So it was a bit risky, like jumping over to Carwow. And I say, yeah, they gave me a bunch of money. You've got to understand that um, Auto Express gave, had very little budget for YouTube. They were focused on the magazine and the website and like YouTube was an afterthought. Whereas Carwow, it was going to be at the forefront. So it would be yeah. like YouTube led in a content offering. And it was more about that than the cash. Though it wasn't loads of cash. It was just more than you were getting, at, um, that I was getting at Auto Express. And for, for, sorry, that's the budget for filming. And how, how many years ago was that? So it's, I started the channel. Well, actually they had a channel already to set up in 2014, but they put a couple of like videos, maybe their TV advert at the time on there. Actual car content went on, I think it was um, 4th of April, 2016. Um, that's when the, the first video review went live. Guess what it was? Guess what car it was? 2016. Yeah. You'll never guess the car. <laughs> Just try that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with a Fiesta ST. It was a Kia Sportage. Ah. A facelifted Kia Sportage. That's, that's sort of how we started. Just with like normal reviews. Yeah, yeah. And how big was YouTube back then? Sort of, was it a money making thing back then, or was it just well, well, for most titles, most kind of like like Auto Express, even that they didn't really make enough money from the ad revenue to cover their costs. But what they would do is sponsor content on there. So a manufacturer yeah, would pay yeah. them some money to do a sponsored post, like saying, here, I'm going to talk you around the latest, I don't know, Nissan Qashqai or something like that. So they'd make money that way from it. But it, because it wasn't regular, like a magazine or or the um, their websites where they'd have their own sales teams to sell in. And, you know, YouTube would just, you just put your video up and Google decide how much money it would give you for how, whatever views it did. It didn't, have a clear business case for them. Um, so it didn't make that much money. Have I lost the plot? I feel like I'm talking about something that you didn't ask me now. No, that's for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've done a lot of filming over the last few days. So I, yeah, <laughs> I'm starting to go a bit demented. <laughs> and so, can you remember what sort of view that was back then? So I remember my first video, when we first put it live in 24 hours, it did 4,000 views. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That's, yeah, and, and some yeah. of the videos that we've done since have done 4,000 views in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. When I look at some of yours now, like you, you'll be nine hours in and there'll be like 400K and half a million and stuff. Yeah. It seems it's mental. Yeah. So, yeah, especially during COVID, I, I was in denial actually during COVID. A lot of people were saying, oh yeah, you, you use a bit of shooting up because of COVID, everyone's in and can't actually watch it. I was like, nah, nah, that's not true. That's not true. We're just freaking awesome. Uh, <laughs> but the views have dropped a little bit from COVID, but they've like leveled out a bit now. At least you said we're awesome rather than you're awesome. <laughs> sharing it a bit out. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, certain videos, like we did one with Formula One car against a Chiron. I mean, that yeah. was like 4,000 a minute uh, and it just like did what, 2 million in a day or something. Yeah. But uh, the problem is we're just constantly having to come up with, I mean, you know what it's like. Yeah. Like you've got to come up with something new. What, how can we do it slightly differently? I, I've basically drag raced every possible per, permutation and combination of car. But then we, we've talked about this before and we use your channel as an example. When it works, it works. And when you, like, you know, you're trying to 
people are more than happy to continue watching the same thing. You know, it's, although you twist it around a little bit, the the whole formula is pretty much identical, isn't it? And it, it just, when it works to that sort of amount of views. Yeah. You know, is it still growing? Obviously it is still growing. Well, you yeah, so said in, in terms of subscribers, yes, it's growing. In terms of views, we're kind of levelish. Right. Um, so, but we're still like long form video, which is the most watched car channel in the world at the moment and has been for the past two or three years. So that literally makes you the most watched face for cars in the world. Uh, no, because obviously you've got, um, you've got like the, the trio, the, um, top, the old Top Gear trio, they're the most watched. But on YouTube currently, yeah, I'd say. So I've done, I think in total about three or four billion views. I think it's three. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And what's the selfie situation going through the airport? Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit random because being YouTube, it's quite global. So if you're in the UK and you're into cars, you'll, you'll have somehow come across CarWow. Most likely you'll yeah. know CarWow and you might recognize me. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be just somewhere in town and someone like looking at you funny and like, you think I've spilt something down myself. Um, and Richard probably had anyway. Well, probably, probably had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and then they they'll come across and say hi, um, or people just come straight out and just go, you know, use it the most inner inappropriate time, you know. <laughs> they just go and one Just really having fine. a wee. Yeah, just really having a wee like, in public as I do. Um, so, but it, because it's international and car fans from all over the world will be served it, then you get it like at customs. So you get someone checking your passport and. And, you know, we were doing a little skit, actually, the, yesterday when we were filming a, a Bentley Bacalar, which is a £2 million like, bespoke Bentley. And we thought we'd have a little bit of a laugh, see what, how much it would cost to insure it. So we just called up an insurance company to see, like, you know, how much is it going to cost to insure. I thought we'd be making a nice skit for the video. And halfway through it, the guy just rumbles. He goes, it's Matt from Carwell, isn't it? I was like, oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you have to be into cars. And this is one of the beauty of it. So let's say if you're fa- I'm like very small, low key, tiny, famous in a very small pond. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite nice because you're not bombarded. Yeah, we, we had a real similar conversation, didn't we, about yeah. your sort of David Beckham, your Michael Jackson, who can't live a life. Yeah. You know, but then when you've got a specialist choice, like you can these days, you know, we, you, we can physically watch whatever we want and whatever, whatever we're interested in rather than the full channels, yeah. which me and you grow, grew up with. Um, it just makes, like you say, famous people in their sectors, which is, you know, it, it's still, do you, do you enjoy it when people say hello? Yeah, yeah I do really enjoy it because like, like you say, it, it's, it's low key and it's a little bit of recognition of, oh yeah, all the work I've done, people yeah, do enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. And to see the different kinds of people in the spread of the audience from, you know, kids to like geriatrics as well. It's yeah. really, and it's completely random. I remember being, <laughs> I was on a boat to Lundy Island. You know Lundy Island? You know where that is? No. It's basically an island off the coast of North Devon. And we decided to go there. It's me and my girlfriend, my friend on holiday. And the crossing was awful. So I was like almost being sick. And some woman comes over to me and thanks me for helping her buy a Skoda Octavia. You know, you just yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. you the guy, you help me with my decision. So there's that side of it, the car review. Once I was having a checkup by a doctor, because I had MRSA, I came down and they had to give me a swab. This doctor's giving a swab in my groin, basically it's cupping my balls, right? And then he looks up and goes, I recognise you. For, from your willy or from your face? From my face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I recognise that. <laughs> so he now knows what my balls feel like. So if everyone watches another video again, here <laughs> I know what that lad's balls are like. Yeah. <laughs> Very strange. But it's a bit odd, that is. I think he shouldn't have said that, like professional courtesy. He should have just kept quiet going, I recognise him. He was the guy, I think he bought, us, what did he bought, a Focus ST? And he said, oh, you helped me with my decision on Focus ST. So, and these are more like the randoms rather than the hardcore fans who are more like watching the drag races. Because yeah, there's yeah. the two elements, there's like the reviews and the drag races. That That's definitely where I knew you from, from the Drags. start. No, from from reviews, because like, you know, if I wanted to buy a car, I'd go onto your channel yeah. to see what you thought of it. And uh-huh. you and that, uh, the guy from America, Doug. Doug DeMiro. Yeah, like I, yeah, I yeah, always yeah. watch his stuff as with well. With his quirks and features. Oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, yeah, no, that's... And then, so obviously... You jumped ship, went to Carwell. Um, obviously, it turned out that paper died and uh-huh. the internet continued. So that was a, a good move. Um, and so just so that 
you know, I, I know the answer to this, but so you, you've got an investment in, in the company as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's very small. So part of like, I'm employed, right? So I'm an employee. Um, I'm on the exec team there. So I'm chief content officer. I'm in charge of all our content in the three different countries we operate in. So that's the written stuff or the social stuff. Um, and the videos, because some people might just think I'm like a presenter, but yeah, actually, yeah, which I'm sure. Lots I mean, you've of been on the shoots with me. I'm like going, do this, this car gets this yeah. car. This is <laughs> you're basically in charge. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> sorry, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so we. Um, so so yeah, I'm employed, and as part of my salary, I have a, a, a small part proportion of shares. It's not massive. It's you know. And what about Matt Watson cars? So Matt Watson cars, basically, um, just for a bit of a laugh to do stuff that isn't quite right with for the car wow um, content strategy. So uh, you'll notice I don't do new cars, I don't do drag races. It's more the crap that I buy myself. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of, it gives me an excuse to buy crap cars. So there's like videos on my rubbish 996 and my, my Fiat 126, because I couldn't afford an air-cooled Porsche. I got just an air-cooled Fiat instead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mazda MX-5 is on there and some other bits and pieces as well, yeah. And changing subject slightly, obviously when I talk to you about, you, you've just recently bought an amazing house and some land. No, I haven't bought an amazing house. The house is pretty, mm, yeah. It's not, I bought, I bought a house with a weird bit of land with it. Yeah. And, and is that part of the future plans in theory, if you could, if you can? Well, I bought it because I basically I had a, like a two bedroom flat in London and I, I had my outdoor space was a balcony and I just always wanted somewhere that was like, it's like a little park. It's, it's kind of the same acreage that you've got, um, but it's laid out like in, in a square and yeah. it's got loads of trees on it. They've all got tree preservation orders on it. So I can't like do anything with it really, but I just wander around it and just relax because the, I mean, the amount of content that we churn, it's, it's quite intense, my job. And I fly abroad like once a week. Um, so I always wonder when, when you sort of like do things abroad, whether it was all accumulated from one, one trip, but you literally are, on a plane once a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 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 nuts. Um, where possible, I will try to do two or three. So last week I flew out to Germany to do some stuff with Brabus and we filmed three cars. Sometimes though, when it's um, like an important car, so there's the Mercedes AMG one. Yeah. Uh, and that was two days, I think, we were out because you've got to fly out one day, then you film the car and then you come back the next. So that was just two days for one video. But the video's done all right, you know, it's in 1.6 or 7 mil. So it's that's done well. And to, you know, the experience as well to drive that car. Yeah, now, very yeah. few people are going to get to drive that car. So to get invited on that, it was, it was quite special. And it's a request from AMG, from Mercedes. Yeah. So what happens is obviously the car manufacturers, they're releasing new cars all the time. And as a part of their marketing strategy, they um, get journalists to review them. Now it's not, when I say marketing, mar marketing is different to PR. So it's actually the PR department, but it's still marketing. It's getting information out about the cars. The difference with the PR is that they're working with journalists who give their honest opinion on a car. So it's slightly different, but it's it's cheaper than uh, marketing where yeah, you're yeah, yeah. buying adverts, you're buying influencers to say exactly what you want them to say. It's different with journalism because the deal is, right, I'll say what I want about your car You'll get loads of views on your car, but you don't have to pay me any money for it. But do you, do you ever get into, what happens when you do that and you think this car is shit? I say it. And if they break down, I show it. And there's certain manufacturers that won't work with me because they don't like how I say things. Literally. Yeah. Um, the, but that's that's part of the car wow, isn't it? The honesty. The we've talked about this recently. You will when you do a drag race, you want the best performance out of that car, so that the true representation between the four cars on that start line is accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, often if you watch a drag race video, you will see we will do like three times. And some people are like, oh, Matt just wants to win. It's not actually I say the case. That a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of do, you know, because I'm very competitive. But actually, my key thing is that the cars leave the line almost at the identical time. So what you see is how they perform rather than how the driver performs. Totally. Yeah. Which is which is yeah a, a big thing. Although you still win because I think the way <laughs> I reckon the way you do it is you look on the specs in the morning and going that's the one I'm going in because that's going to win. 
Um, what usually happens is- You've got to tell the truth on Archie. Okay, so the truth is, I will pick, I would like, I don't want to be in a car that's at the back, although sometimes it does happen. We did something with um, a bunch of like Japanese imports cars um, and the NSX was the slowest. It was like a Gran Turismo style drag race. And the NSX was the slowest and I was in that, but I wanted to be in that because it was like the noise of it, the emotion from it, which I'd help, help me get it across on camera. But generally- the way it works is that I will go in the car that's the newest because yeah, that's yeah. the interesting car. Yeah, so it yeah. makes sense for the lead presenter to be in the interesting yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes when we might use three cars, we will use one car and go in three drag races. And I, I won't always be in the same car. I'll then move into the next car. So it's not totally boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. Probably if you did the maths, I will end up being winning most of the time or, or you know, probably about 50% of the time, which can, when you consider that sometimes there's um, four cars in the lineup, you know, it should be, if you average it out, it would, should work to about th one in three times I would win. But it's mainly, I, I don't know, it's because the newer car is usually up there because no one releases a car that's slower or much slower than its competitors. Uh, and where, obviously you've got a deep love for cars and how, when did that start? Oh God, since I was a little kid, I guess. I've never classed myself as a hardcore anorak. Having worked on like a, a car magazine, you get like people who are like real hardcore anorak, car anoraks who, you know, were well into motorsport, been to loads of Formula One races and BTCC races and um, knew, know everything about all cars since the, they, um, since they could talk. I'm not quite like that. I was more into like the, the actual sensation of driving rather than like the geekiness of the cars themselves. I was actually into motorbikes more. Have you, have you ridden motorbikes? Uh, Off-road, but not on-road. So, okay, how do you find them? Do you prefer them in a way, the sensation you get from a motorbike? A hundred percent, but the reason I don't is literally just my body. No, yeah. no other reason. I mean, you smash yourself up in the cars, haven't you? <laughs> so, uh, on a bike, you'd be pretty fucked. <laughs> Without a roll cage, even more danger. Well, yeah, that's exactly what has happened. Neck, back. Everything. And so that's kind of like, for me, I had a bike, uh, I had something that could have, I was very lucky, but I almost had a car drive over me when I got smashed off my bike and this car almost drove over me because his brakes locked up and at the last minute he steered around. And I had this moment just looking at him coming towards us, fishtailing. I thought, okay, this is how I die. And it was kind of like just cold like that. Oh, well. And you really had time for that thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was fishtailing um, over, came up, basically I came over a humpback bridge and this car turned across me like that, smashed me off my bike. I was only doing like about 30 and it was one of the, the rare days that I was actually wearing my leathers. The day before I was doing <coughs> in the wet, in shorts and a t-shirt. I was like 25. Um, but the next day, just pulling back from my mates, um, knocked off my bike. But this car must just have been like ragging it behind me. I didn't know it was there. And it came off the Humbrack Bridge and it was, it was, what was it? It was the mid 90s. So some cars just on the road without ABS. Anyway, this guy just fishtailing towards me. And I reckon he lifted off about from here to the camera away and just made it past me. But he was, if it had been someone who didn't know, if he, he was clearly skilled, he knew what he was doing. If it had been someone else, if it had been me driving that car, it killed me. <laughs> Honestly, because I just got, and I just got squished. I'm just making sure that wasn't me. Because at 17, the first, the first day I passed my test, I borrowed my mum's golf automatic and went bridge jumping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to do the maths. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember hitting a, a, a motorbike rider. No, you didn't hit me. That's the thing. Oh, no, I'm not ruling it out. I'm just yeah. saying I don't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was it because I, I, this is like in the Midlands where I grew up and could that have been? Yeah. It, I was impossible. in Redditch. You were, you were Warsaw, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would have been, you had no business going to Warsaw. Depends where I landed. It depends how far <laughs> I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> So what was your first car? So when you were, you passed your test, test at 17, I guess. Yeah. So I uh, passed my test like two months after my birthday. I could drive before I could drive because my dad used to take me on like a local industrial estate, you know, you drive around. And and so he was a bit tight, but I say tight, it's a bit mean on him. He was um, careful with his money, my dad was. And so he didn't- <laughs> Tight. He, yeah. <laughs> he he got, means tight. Yeah, he was tight. And so he, he didn't see, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for an instructor. So he taught me which was, you know, really good of him, actually, when you think about the time it takes. But I needed four lessons to actually get the rules right, make sure that, you know, you... What well, do you know about this? Because you did a test the other day, didn't you? Nope. Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, 
for a, a different nope. kind of vehicle. <laughs> Knowing the, like, the procedure to pass. So there's certain things you've got to do. Like look over your shoulder. Like look over your shoulder and check your blood. You know, you don't have to do that in a car, but you know, you're checking your mirror. So it was that, I had four lessons to get that down. And then I did the test. And, and bought a car or borrowed dad's or? Oh God, what did, oh. So my parents lent me a mini Metro, which I hated. So that's what I had to drive around. And fortunately, a month after I passed my test, um, someone pulled out of a junction on me, an old lady who I think had been on the sherry because she's, she was subsequently prosecuted. <laughs> sherry and Murray mints. Yeah, sherry and Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that heady cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she pulled out and smashed, written off the car. Was, cars back then, they just absolutely folded in two. I mean, I just missed her door. It was lucky, otherwise she'd have, um, she'd have been done for. But but the, um, the I remember the gear lever like being like in the back of the car because the engine had just pretty much come through <laughs> and twisted around. And it, it was quite, and it was like, I, you know, I was 17 years old, smashed this car. And I was just like, oh, what do I do? I'll go out of the car. My mate's house was just around the corner. So I just went round to my mates to go, help, I've just crashed my car. What do I do? Anyway, we come back to the scene of the accident and the police are there. And then they go to arrest me because I've left the scene. Same accident, yeah, and yeah. I, I didn't know. And when I went back to my mates, I, I, I don't know whether this is true. I can't remember. It might be like a false memory, but I think either he or his dad was going to offer me a whiskey to calm me down. And if if I'd, I'd had that and gone back, they'd have done yeah. me for um, drunk driving and I would not be doing this job today. Did they check her sherry content or not? Yeah, or? well, I, she was prosecuted. Was she? Yeah, she was done for, I think back in the day, they had a, a thing called dangerous driving or uh, something like that. She was, yeah, she was prosecuted. Um but yeah, so anyway, after that, got into my mum's XR2i, didn't I? Oh, good move. Good move. <laughs> so I got into XR2i, my, my brother had one of them. It was deadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 126 miles an hour. I remember going over, um, hitting some water, 126 miles. And that's as fast as it would go was 126. <laughs> And I, I, I remember going down this hill, going, we were both going, me and my mate Mark, going 124. One, two, five, like that. So it just taking forever. Then we it um hit some water. And uh yeah. And you're my, still here. My, it was my brother's car. He was on holiday. The reason why I was driving it, so I basically just borrowed it for ten minutes and nearly yeah. Well, went jet skiing in it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the things but, yeah. you do as a kid, like oh, cars. But it was just, I really think that it was different then though, wasn't it? You it was people you know, I'm sure you were the same. I'd go out with older friends and they would drink and drive home. It was, it it was, maybe I had bad friends. Yeah, I, I was always quite hot on that, that I wouldn't. I don't know why, even from that age. I, I, I never have, uh -huh. never, but my friends, my friends definitely did to the fact where it was horrifically scary. Really? No, I, um, one thing I, maybe one of the reasons I never did is because I used to play quite a lot of computer games and like if I had just like one can or something like that, I'd just be shit at the computer game. And I kind of apply that to cars. Like you don't think it's impaired you, but even one drink and like, no, I don't at all. I won't even have a drink. Yeah, I, I definitely couldn't drink and drive. No way. Cause like I feel a difference when I've had one, one yeah, massively. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can definitely tell I'm shit at drinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Horrendous at drinking <laughs> and horrendous at the day after as well. So. Oh yeah. Terrible. And then I think never again. And then next time I go out, binge drink again. Yeah, that, I kind of do that. It's my wait, my mate's wedding in April. And um, I knew it was going to be bad when I said to his his wife-to-be, has everyone else gone to bed? And I'm never the last one up. And it's like 4 a.m. I was like, <laughs> this, this is going to be bad. <laughs> and then I spent the night and there's me, me and Joe with Grace and she was probably six months old there in the middle of us. Oh, that was a bad night's sleep. <laughs> and we drove to the... Um, Drove to the uh, the wedding the next day and Joe oh, had to drive. that was the start of the wedding? Yeah. That Joe, was pre-wedding. Yeah, Joe had to drive and I was in the back just lying down. Just like, oh, oh can you stop going around the roundabout? She's like, I've got to go around the roundabout to get to the bloody location. <laughs> anyway, I got there and I opened the door and I just chundered all over the car park floor. Oh, brilliant. At the, at the wedding. <laughs> at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> then my mate was trying to give me like, he had like a little hip flask. He was trying to give me like hair of the dog and I don't buy into hair of the dog. It's just like, it's just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I've come that far. I'm going to just get through it now. Uh, oh, but it was awful. Awful. I haven't drunk now for, uh, I, I haven't drunk now for three weeks. I go through phases of just not drinking. Do you drink at home then? Uh, I, I was off work for a month, took like a month off, um, paternity leave. 
it was like delayed by a year because of just churning content. Anyhow, uh, I, so I, I was drinking then. And I, I don't enjoy it like I used to. I don't enjoy it. And, and yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm much, I'm, I'm much more with it when I, I'm not drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just becomes a habit. I drink non-alcoholic beer and I, I like the taste of them. I enjoy them. I didn't even know they still made that. No, it's really good. Honestly, non-alcoholic Guinness is not an advert for them. It's not sponsored content on the video. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't never say never. <laughs> it's honestly so good. But yeah. Anyway, this is supposed to be about cars and I'm yeah. oh, yeah. let's, let's, go, let's go back to <laughs> non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> How fast have you been in a car? Um, I'm trying to think. It could be, t I can't remember the exact number. Is it 212? And it was on the Autobahn. It's either 212 or 218 on a, the Autobahn in a Bugatti Chiron Supersport. In the road. On the road. Oh, I'll tell you what. When you're doing that, like you're driven on the Autobahn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Germans are really good at lane discipline because lane discipline, they're used to people just like hurtling down the fast lane and they usually just have two lanes. Sometimes they have three on the motorways, but often just two. Anyhow, um, they're usually pretty good, but with a shear, they're not used to a shear on and how fast it's moving. So they'll pull out on you and it's like normally be fine, like 400 metres ahead. In the Chiron, when you're doing like that kind of speed, you've got to get on those brakes. You're looking so far ahead, being yeah, on those yeah. brakes, and you slow yourself down. And you look down, you're like still doing like 150. You're like, blimey. Yeah, on the road, 212. On the drag strip, probably not much faster, really. Yeah, yeah. That's mental, mental. I, I did 200 on, on, on Carwell a few weeks ago. and Oh, yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. And that was just amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So... And I, I know that every mile an hour was pretty sketchy. So it's, it's a top end because it's come so slow. So it? slow, so slow. Hence the XR2i, the same thing from 124 to 125. <laughs> but, yeah, it's definitely a slow procedure. And how far were you from the end of the runway when you um, hit top, what you backed off from? Like we could have done another five mile an hour. Easier. Yeah, but that five mile an hour... You get yeah. that wrong by a mile an hour, yeah. you'll just, you lose the undercarriage of that as you just get off the end of the runway. Well, we did, I don't know if you remember saying, me and Chiro were sort of high-fiving and getting all excited and looked down and I was still doing 140 mile an yeah. hour and gone past the last bit and thinking, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I definitely had more time, but I wasted that time by celebrating uh -huh. and getting all excited. What was your goal to hit the... Hit past the two and oh, just the two hundred again, yeah. That that was that was the 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 thing, yeah. To just two hundred and then and I ruined it for you, didn't I? Do you remember what I said? No. Oh, good, I didn't. Then I'm going to ruin it for you now. Did you hit two hundred? Oh no, yeah, I do remember what you said, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't listen. It's irrelevant. <laughs> he's telling he's telling a lie. It well, was yeah, something no, to do with GPS and dots. Just basically, your your speedo will over count. So you probably at 200. Jordan, cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you probably only did about 192. But what you should do, next time you come down, uh, I'm sure it'll be soon, uh, do it again with yeah. the GPS. I've got one of those sames, that, that um, the race box thing. Race box, yeah. yeah. Do it on that and you'll have it logged. And, and it, it's that different. Yeah, it can be. It's Italian as well. It's always going to like big itself up. Isn't it? <laughs> Porsche might be a bit closer, but that's be like, hey, 200, you know. <laughs> it's actually about 130. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> What's the worst car you've ever driven? And you, like, yeah, by all means. Mitsubishi upset. Mirage. Really? Yeah. The steering didn't even self center. And this is a new car. New, brand new car. I think it's from like 2000 and eight maybe 2009 and they it was imported from japan and like they, they only sold it in limited numbers over here but it, it was just dreadful um I, I, but the cent just everything about it, it was still had to open everything on the key in the top spec car yeah and you turn the wheel like that and you know on the car what it like self writes it, it wouldn't do that properly it was just rubbish and best car oh god this is really hard it's a really really hard question because it's like am i talking about like Okay, less expensive car to start with. I mean, when it came out, Mark 7 Golf, I mean, if it's really boring, this is me being a car review, a really good all-round car. They're not as good, the, the latest ones aren't as good because VW got hit with all the, the fines and they do this less in their cars to pay off the fines. And also they're having to like make the switch to electric. Anyway, that's all boring car review stuff. Um, so <laughs> Recently, the cars that really stuck in my head the GI Yaris, and that's why I bought one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I got in that. There's certain cars you just get in, you're like, whoa, oh, yeah, this is so good. Recently, I did a review on my own channel of the BMW M3 CSL, and that's another one. You just get in, you drive, it's just, oh, it's so good. There's so many other cars that are, like, faster and, 
you know, more expensive or people think they'd rather have, but it's, it's like you, we were talking about it early, the, the balance of that E46, the power, the weight, the um, the purity of it. It's, it's almost like that time where it's just peak car, like the early noughties, I think they're really yeah, yeah, 100%, right. 100% where, yeah, where electric and come, oh, electric assistant and assistance hadn't come in too much. And but they've got the suspension sorted on cars. Yeah. So they've got the suspension sorted on the cars. They knew how to make them drive, but it wasn't too, um, you know, yeah, like you're saying, all the assistant systems. Yeah, like my, I've got an old a 996, which is like 1998, and it's really good fun. So what what cars have you got? Okay, so I've got a Mazda MX-5 Mark II, which is the worst one, most people say, but it, it's supercharged, so it's got 200 wheel horsepower. I love them. It's, yeah. Honestly, it's so much, so much fun, I love it. I've got a Fiat 126, which I bought because I was seeing a Polish girl, and I went over to Poland, and there's loads of them there. I was like, oh, these are kind of cool, aren't they? And they're quite cheap, and I thought they might go up in value, so I bought one. That's going to be value. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite a funny little car. It's, it's, it's just quirky. So I won't sell it because there's no point selling it. Um, I've got a 911 996 uh, 3.4, basic, no sunroof, manual, coupe, with an interior that looks like, you know, when you, a be- when you have a baby and like the first three months when they do a poo, it's like this kind of like weird chicken korma colour, <laughs> regardless. Of, yeah, it's, it's that, it's that interior. Um, so I'd love I've, to know what that was called now. The, the poo? Yeah. Oh, no, the colour of the car. It was called Savannah Beige. Oh, Savannah. I had a black, I had a black 996 with Savannah. Did you? Horrendous. I love it. Did I, you? Yeah. Oh. I mean, what's the colour of your, your Ventador's lot, um, dark. What's your SEO? Yeah, you, see, you do like some dip, odd colour. And you're like talking there, about yeah. your, um, your NSX. No, I don't like seats in that. And I'm, I thought, I'm, I'm black, 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 black. No, black. no, no. I so love boring. a light interior. So boring I am. No, I, look, I just, it makes them, the cabin feel bigger. It's just more interesting. Every car that I spec, in fact, I'm specking up an Audi R8 for my next like daily. And I'm going um, green, like dark green, brown roof, brown interior. <laughs> That's good. Who dresses you in the morning? Because it can't be you, because that looks pretty normal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, some of the videos, if you look at some of the videos, I was, I was wearing like je- jean shorts, black socks and black trainers. I just look <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so social media, yeah. obviously it's becoming quite popular recently. I don't know if... Um, I've noticed. <laughs> so what your, obviously Instagram, which obviously I'm big into with watching you and your YouTube yeah. massively. Mm-hmm. Any of us? So I do TikTok as well and a bit of Twitter and Facebook. So literally everything. The, the most famous ones, yeah, um, with varying degrees of success. And was your Facebook your original? No, the- no, 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 no. So YouTube's really where I started. Right, yeah, yeah. So I started off on YouTube, but then I started doing Facebook ages ago, but it took it was really hard to grow Facebook because it was they'd already decided, Facebook, that if you've got to grow, you've got to pay them. Yeah, yeah, and I'd never yeah. paid for anything. Like the YouTube, never paid for it. Some people actually, when I first moved across, um, they used to think that like we bought views and stuff like that, but it doesn't work. So if you start buying views, one of the problems with it is that you're getting people that aren't that interested in your content. And so when you're not paying and you put out a video of sample, the algorithm will sample test like how interesting a video is by putting it towards your audience. And if half your audience uh, people that you pay for aren't that interested, it's going to just think that you're crap. So overall, yeah, you yeah, die. That makes sense. So you have to do it organically. Um, yeah, so YouTube was the main one. Then I did Facebook, but it was hard to grow. And then I, so my ex often told me to get onto Instagram. And I, I kind of like did what I was told. And it was, <laughs> it, it was kind of slow at first, but then it just started to pick up and then just ticked away quite steadily. But when I got on it, it was very much when Instagram was it all about the photos and you know, just launch stories. And so you could grow an audience with um, photography. And luckily, because my job, I get access to a load of cool cars. So it's quite easy for me yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to grow that and had really good engagement. But over the past, I don't know if you've noticed it. Um, I, th- I know it's people with, um, some other people have, who've been on the platform for quite a while. They've noticed that it doesn't care about photos anymore. Like yeah, reels only, yeah. It's like, I've had to switch totally to reels, which are much harder to produce. And do you do all that yourself? Yeah. Literally, so you must spend I, your day on the phone. Yeah, so I do it myself. I get the content myself. I 
anything that's on like the socials on my own channel, I'll do it all myself while also doing car wire. So car wire do six videos a week at port. And then there's all my socials on top of it. So the car wow, is that, are you on a drag strip once a week? So we do it probably twice uh, every two weeks and we'll film a bunch in a days, you know? Yeah. That's flipping. I, honestly, it's, it's nonstop. And then of course, I'm, cause I'm a, like a manager as well. I have to do um, that kind of side of the business as well. So on your socials, obviously through Car wow and stuff, when did you think we're making a difference here? When sort of like, did you think, yeah, I'm happy with where we are? So um, I remember when I first joined Car wow and, you know, put the first video live and one of the milestones was 50,000 subs. I didn't put like the subscriber count live until we got to 50,000 subs. So it was hidden. I think we reached that, sorry, in April and we reached it in September. And then we got to 100,000 subs that, I think it was within a year, we got to 100,000 wow. subs. And part of the strategy was, it was mainly reviews, reviews and group tests. And then every weekend we'd do like a halo shoot, which was the drag race to get more people on the channel, which, you know, get more people on the channel. You have more people following you. So they're more likely to watch the reviews as well, which will help tell people about the business and how car work can help them in getting their next car. Um, and then I remember there's this definite time when we got like this, it was probably about a year and a half in where we did a drag race and it was a Honda Civic Type R versus a, a the, the AMG A45 when it just come out, an RS3 and a Golf R. Yeah, great And I came up with the idea like this, this thumbnail where you have the car brands underneath it. So it shot from behind the car and that one just flew. So that thumbnail was a massive difference. That thumbnail made, and that's when I learned how important thumbnails were. Uh, so basically if you're doing YouTube, there's three key things to make a video successful. The first is your premise. What's it about? What is the content of the video about? Are people going to be interested in it? Now, a lot of the time, I reckon I, I know 60% of the time, 40% I, I get it wrong. But I, it, it's about the premise. It doesn't matter what your thumbnail or your title is. If you get that premise right, it's going to be okay. However, to maximize it, you need to get your thumbnail. You've got to get your thumbnail and your title right. Because I've noticed sometimes we switch um, thumbnails. Like you've yeah, got video yeah, live, yeah. do that. Switch thumbnails around. Uh, we've just started doing that because th there's a guy which we follow, which I, I'm really into. And I think, oh, I've not watched that before. Uh -huh. And I click on it. I'm like, oh, yes, I have watched yeah, it. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so it's not for that. So the reason, I don't I do not do it for that. So they're like views probably a, a week or so down the line. I do it like within hours. Oh uh, right. yeah. Yeah. So Matt Armstrong told us about this, that if it's not performing, he'll yep. switch it up. Switch it up, try a different, try a different. Uh, thing. And often, most of the time you don't see a difference. That's on your channel. Yeah. On, on Car wow and my own, I'll do both. So you, you even change the thumbnails on Car Wows? Yeah. We change them on the Car, car wow. Yeah. Yeah. Make, make a difference. No, but you make that decision as well. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Like, come on, I'm checking the numbers. So as soon as the video goes live, I'm like blooming rain. So you're numbers. watching all your numbers. Yeah. All the time. Wow. I said, I'm amazed. I mean, I'm basically, if, <sighs> there's, okay, you know this. Like you were joking earlier about like, you know, your business. So your main business is? Straps. Straps. And I was just saying like, you, obviously you've done very well for yourself out of straps. Um, are you one of these people that does the business just run itself and you don't do fuck all? No. Yeah, not in any way, shape or form. Okay, because unless you are, I reckon probably 0.1% of people get in that lucky situation. And that's the same as winning the lottery, right? The rest rest of it all comes from hard work. Now you can put in a lot of hard work and not be successful, but to be successful, generally you need to be lucky and hard working. It's those two. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So you've got to be lucky. Uh, and when luck arrives, you've got, to, you've got to ride the shit out of that luck. And that takes hard work. <laughs> And that's kind of what happened with CarWow, that we we got lucky with certain things. You know, at the time when uh, uh, we launched a channel, it was when I think like the, the major car brands like Evo, Auto Express, Autocar, they were quite big and they took their off the ball. They um, didn't see the returns coming from the ad revenue because it wasn't quite enough. And so they didn't do the investments in it. So they weren't really putting much into it. And then you had like the bloggers coming up, um, like Shmi and Supercars of London. And part of the reason they come up was because... Um, Top Gear, Clarkson had just punched someone, Top Gear was off. So people weren't getting their like car thrills from there. And it was also new. 
getting to see whatever supercars you want on your phone. And so they were on the rise. And what we managed to do was just hit this point where the traditional journalism was going down. The vloggers were coming up and we did a blend of the two of them. And it was just right place, right time, right opportunity, minimal competition in that area. And so the algorithm picked us up and we flew. Uh, and then the, and then we, we put in loads of hard work right from day one. What we're going to do is beat the competition by just absolute, they will not work harder than us. They will yeah, not yeah, work yeah, harder yeah. than us. And that's the way it's going to be. And we, we went, various staff couldn't keep up. Um, but we've got a team that can, you know, we're all like driven in this way. And it's just, you know, you build a good team behind you that can maintain this output. And then we get some more luck with the drag race. And so we really lean into that. And, it, and, and back to like the three things uh, about uh, making a YouTube video successful. So I've done thumbnail, I've done the premise. Um, the other one is um, watch time, overall watch time. So that's how long people are watching the video for, but not just that. It's also, are they like to then go and watch another video? How basically to be successful on YouTube, how much money can you make Google? And Google thought yeah, yeah, from know. the car world, we can make them pretty much the most money. Yeah. So they obviously put you into good places. So on they, their list. Yeah, they'll throw, um, they'll suggest our, um, our content in the browse feed because basically subscribers don't really matter that much anymore because you don't always, do you go into your subscription feed and go, oh, I'm looking at You don't. You just turn on YouTube and it's basically just what's in the feed and you want to be, your video needs to be in that feed higher up. Yeah. And yeah. that's how it works. And YouTube decides that nothing you can do apart from trying to do those three things right. And that's how you do it. But I'm amazed sort of, you know, I, I know that the business is a big business and, and you're the presenter and the face, which is obviously the main face, but I'm amazed that you're so involved. It's, I had absolutely no idea. No, it's, it's like my, it's my baby, right? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I, like, I'll decide what videos we're doing. Um, I, so the team will go here, here's some ideas. Here's and how many, when we're saying I'm an editor, team. basically, I was an editor, at, um, I like an editor of a magazine, decides what goes into it. So I don't do all the work. I mean, there's so much legwork done in like organising the cars, yeah, yeah. Um, dealing with manufacturers, dealing with travel, dealing with logistics, obviously the editing team, making sure that, I don't, what I don't do that I used to do in the early days, I used to go through every single edit, Every single yeah, edit. watch it and watch it get cut. I don't, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the time to do that anymore. But we're in this place that we know what, uh, uh, what it looks like. So your production team is say twenty people or something like that. Or f- uh, so for video, six, and then the the back end of the, the business. back end so the people who are like writing content on the website um, finding information about the car so that when I say the stats in a drag race I don't look those up someone will give them to me. Um, and booking the cars in. So that's another six or seven. But what about the business side, the sort of- The, the whole car by itself with the, the car buying and selling platform, that's like uh, 300 internationally. Jeez. But that's that's the actual business. So basically, if you don't know already, Carway is a platform where you can change your car. So if you're thinking about selling your car, it is the sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is where the sponsorship ad comes in. <laughs> yeah. This is where we have to smile. <laughs> so, so basically the whole thing is about uh, a platform where people can either sell their car, a bit like we buy any car, but much better price that you'll get for your car. Um, or you can buy a new car rather than going from dealer to dealer to dealer to check out the, what they'll let you, they'll sell you the car for. You can just do it quickly on CarWow and you get the offers from dealers. So you can sell your car and buy your next car and make sure that the prices are about right. And can you tell how many is, is that usage rising? Obviously, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it took a dip, obviously it took a dip. Um, the new car business took a bit of a dip because of um, the chip shortage. It took a bit of a dip because of Ukraine. Because what happened is the manufacturers didn't, I mean, you know what it's like trying to buy cars. Um, and when you car, when we do use cars as well now, but the, the main part of our business was new cars. There's just not enough, they couldn't get enough to sell. Now it's changing. And so it's like picking up again. But the, the good thing was that we had this sell your car side so the, the used car market got really hot when the, the new car market was struck, um, basically had the supply issues. And so a lot of people were selling cars and buying used cars, selling the, their old car. Their people were still selling their car, but going into a newer used car. So that's how the business has gone like that. And how does that business generate a revenue? So it's from basically every time there's a transaction, uh, someone sells a car, we get, uh, we get income from it. And when we 
give a lead to a dealer about here's someone who's thinking about buying a new car and they then we generate income from that and how do they quantify how that where if that sales come through youtube no sorry how do how does the dealer Obviously, the dealer gives you a kickback. Yeah. No, oh, no, because what it's done is based on, in, so it's based on inquiry. Right, okay. So yeah, we'll send yeah, them yeah. inquiries and build them for the inquiries. Got you. Yep, so just- the In the leads. past, we used to be per sale. So the dealer would, might, could have the ability to go, Yeah. oh, it didn't come through car wag. But de- dealers, are, no, they, they won't do that. <laughs> Some of them have. <laughs> the honest car trade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's just the car trade, it's just trade, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many countries is car wow in? So, so car wow's in three countries. So we've got the UK, Germany, and Spain. Though that's the website. In terms of the YouTube channel, obviously the channel's global, but we also have foreign versions of the car wow channel. So we've got a South American one. I think that it's been running maybe about a year. So we translate it into a South American accent. Someone in South America translates it. And that does 9 million views a month. Um, we've got a Russian one. That's mental, isn't it? Which does like, and it's the same content as well. Same content it? with someone just um, in. So I think where they're from. I think they're from they're from Mexico, and they um, although Mexico isn't. Sorry, it's Latin America, not South America. We've also got a Russian channel. Yeah, obviously, not that, yeah, yeah. We, we obviously don't earn any ad revenue, and we stopped our ad revenue on that before Google stopped our revenue in Russia. Um, but it's watched. I think thirty percent of the audience is Ukrainian. Um, about 60% is Russian. And then there's some other like Kazakhstan and um, Belarus and stuff. But that does 30 million a month. It's almost it's a million crazy. subscribers. It's just unbelievable, isn't Japan, it? Japan, Korea, Brazil. And uh, they're, they're all translated into yeah, 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 yeah. other languages. Yeah. So, so they'll watch Mark's and your video. Uh-huh. Of, of I don't know you. what voice they do for you. That's what I was going to say. Probably just they probably the got... same person. So you'll just sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark sounds like Matt, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm usually just a voice anyway, because my GoPro usually fails. And was, the last one was one, of, it was me going like that. Oh God, that was brilliant. What, oh, GoPros. Oh. Yeah, always. So so that's a, obviously, I wonder what, I'd love to know, but I don't know if you know what's the, what the, the total sub rate is. Yeah, it's over 10 be. million in total um, and views per month. I think I'm... I think we did pretty much in 2021, we did a billion views in a year in total. That's mental, isn't it? Across all of them. Because I see there's a, there's a German, the, the, you introduced a German guy. The other yeah, day, yeah, didn't yeah. You? Um, so is he, that's going to be a separate program now yeah. manufactured in Germany. So the, the whole reason behind the YouTube channel for CarWow was, there's two reasons. One was to produce video reviews of cars so that users on the website, when they're doing their research about the car, they could watch a video because, you know, more and more people were starting to watch a video um, as part of their buying um, journey. So that's one of the reasons why we did it. But the other reason was some people might do their search, like the second biggest search engine in the world is YouTube. So rather than just going on Google, they go on YouTube to search. And so we'd be marketing our brand on on YouTube. So if someone to search for a review of a Volkswagen Golf, they'd watch our video and I'd inform them that there's this thing called CarWire, which could help save them money on the car they're thinking of buy. And and that's the reason why we did it in marketing. But then it kind of really took off. And t- um, we do like a survey of people that use the website. And like 25% of the people who use CarWow, the business, say they first heard about it through YouTube. So it's like, when you look at the, the marketing value, that's really, really high. And the fact that it makes a profit because... One of the things that YouTube does, it like has these like preferred um, channels that it works with. So like our ad revenue is like that. And then we got uh, promoted because our views were so high to go onto this preferred level. And it was like stepping up, powering up your ad, like tripled it. Wow. And so it like, yeah, it, it does make a profit. And does that Carwell back end work in those different countries? or, or no. they, So they are literally just YouTube Yeah, channels. just so South America, sorry, Latin America, um, Russia, and that. No, there's no website to support in it. But the German channel, we have a separate German channel with a separate German presenter and a separate chan- Spanish channel with a Spanish presenter. They have the back end. Right. The idea is, is that really in those markets, especially European markets, where if it's coming to like buying advice and stuff like that, you probably don't want, you want someone in your native tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you want being British we have this doing on the correct side of the car, the right-hand side, whereas other Europeans have got it wrong on the left, but they think it's right. 
or even though it's wrong and left. Anyhow, and so when, you know, the, it's like buying advice, they probably don't want a right-hand drive car. Yeah, yeah. The, the, us Brits are more used to seeing it. They're less used to seeing the cut of the wheel on the right side, which they think is the wrong side. Anyway. But that, 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 um, um, that franchise, I suppose you could call it, sort of like which can go across those different countries, yeah. is basically a, a model which works identical, doesn't it? You know, really, it could go anywhere, any country. Yeah, I mean, obviously, A, you need the investment. B, what other um, businesses are operating? So are there any competitors already set up there? So there, there is that, you know, like, for instance, in America, there's um, similar organisations. So, and trying to break America's blooming hard. Yeah, If you yeah. do it, I mean, you're laughing. But you, you well, what, do you know what your stats are, America viewers, compared to? So you count about 10%. 10%. And majority, obviously, UK. Yeah, the biggest majority is the UK. Um, but it's so global, like so global. Our channel, like, is just nuts. Just, yeah. I mean, one of the things is if we were based, if we could have our, what we have in the UK as views and we had them and we were based in America and you, like, extrapolated it for the population of America, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So today, what right, I filmed with you, and I've enjoyed that more like filming with you because the pressure's off me. I'm not thinking about what's this going to look like. How's it going to perform? What's it? So I'm not thinking about that. I've got to get this content. I've got to make a video here. What's the story? Okay. So this happened. Can I make an extra element out of that part? Because you know, on a drag race, something will happen and I can, I'll think about, oh, how can we include that or make that part of like the, the story yeah, to make yeah. it interesting? So I'm not having to think about that. It's up to you <laughs> to do it. Because <laughs> I've seen you on some of those. Sometimes you are stressed. <laughs> and I mean stressed. But the thing is, I, the, the drag race shoots are are the, the most fun to do because when we're racing, it's like, it's good fun. But they never go right, do they? Because obviously there's so many different elements. A car doesn't turn up. Somebody lets you down. A car's not working. Yeah. It starts raining. A car won't go into launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a lot And the clock's ticking. A Tesla, a Tesla runs out of battery. Tesla runs out of battery or it's got not enough battery to deliver full performance. You know, if you put that live, then the people are just going to rinse you out. And you can't put it live because it's not fair anyway. No, no, no. And then, yeah. No, I'll tell you what the worst is when you're driving to a drag race suit and then it starts to rain. It wasn't supposed to rain. And you know, you've got a bunch of high performance rear wheel drive cars. It's just like, oh, this is just crap now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. See, what do you do then? Because obviously that naught to 60 is like absolutely nowhere near it should. Obviously you just still do what you do. Uh, when you're in that seat, yeah, you just roll with it and just this is what it's like in the wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we've done some videos in the wet and they've gone massive. I mean, yeah. Because... Uh, I don't think I don't think I've ever been to your place. Well, a, a shoot when it's been nice weather, it's always been. Oh yeah, it's cold. It's, yeah, it's always cold. Even when it's sunny, it's cold because it's an airfield, so it's just open. Um, but yeah, it, and we're heading into winter now. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's going to be, be hard. Honestly, but we shouldn't. I shouldn't. I'm sounding like really miserable. It, it is amazing. I get to like travel the world and drive awesome cars, and um, but it, it is all consuming, or I've let it become all consuming. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's. Look, I can totally get that now because the, the level of commitment and effort and work which you put into those is way more than I thought. I thought you're just a pretty face, if I'm honest. I'm not that. You say I wouldn't be able to rely on that. Because <laughs> that's one of the things, you see, because um, like, I watch other people's videos and I think, oh, that's so much better than what I do. Oh, that's, you know, um, I wish I was a, as good a presenter as him, blah, 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 blah. I've, I've stopped that a bit. I used to be like that quite a lot. I hated it. I, I don't... I wouldn't not watch my, I'd always watch myself and I'd watch myself so critically, so critically. See, that, that, that amazed me, like that you'd think that, you know, somebody, you just str strive to be somebody else when I think that what you do is brilliant. Yeah, but it's all slightly, you know, I was massively inspired by Cl Jeremy Clarkson. So if you watch some of my early videos, I'm not going to point you in the direction of them, but maybe if you search like old Auto Express videos, You'll hear me talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the first, this is a really funny first video that I did. And um, I was so nervous. I couldn't even walk and talk. So I'd, I'd like say a line, crouch down, then let's look hard. Because it's about, in fact, I'll, I'll give you a chance to maybe find it. It's something, I think it's called High Intensity Discharge Lights. It's, it was some expose about you be able to buy these um, aftermarket Xenons and they're just dangerous because they're scattered the light everywhere. Anyhow, uh, this opening scene, I'm saying something, crouched down by a headlight, really 
really, really stilted the way my delivery. And then I have to stop talking to stand up because I can't talk and stand at the same time. <laughs> That's basic multitasking. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. <laughs> Honestly, I was so rubbish. So anyone who's there, like, oh, I'm not a very good presenter, blah, 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 blah. You, you, I guarantee you are better than I was. I guarantee it. And it's just because I've done over a thousand or so videos now that I, I don't care so much of what I look like. I don't care no, I so get that. what yeah. I look like. Because I, 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 I remember the first time I came into Carwell and we did a little bit of an outro. It was getting dark and I stood there and shit myself and oh. didn't know what to say. But then luckily you sort of stepped in and pretty much said 99% of the words because I had nothing to say. And yeah, it, it is difficult. And, and like you say, just you are what you are and you can only be what you can be and it's as good as it's going to be. As long as you put full maximum effort in, then... I don't really know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm no, no, you're, no, you're right. So that's basically where the, the hard effort comes in because I didn't feel like I was particularly naturally very good. Um, I didn't think I knew quite as much about the cars as some of like the other motoring journalists. Um, one of the reasons why we did drag races um, and not so many track battles because my I'm, I wasn't consistent enough to put it. I mean, I could drive all right around a track, but I wasn't consistent enough to really be fair on the cars. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's a bit of luck that people, actually people prefer watching drag races than like real hardcore, um, like car nerds might prefer the track time stuff, but drag races are more realistic, right? I mean. And I, th I think they're a lot more fun. To watch. Like the, stats, the stats are great, but then when you see, and I think where you make it special is your obvious enjoyment of winning. <laughs> Which, is, yeah. which I think is... I am competitive. Um, and that's w when I go onto the channel, on your channel, I do try and sort of... Because sometimes, I don't know if you're the same, but when I started like doing this to start with, loads of things would happen in here, but they wouldn't come out yeah. of here. So like I'd watch it back and I thought, I'm sure I said something. I did. I said loads of things in my head, okay. but they never came out of my mouth. I oh, really? Okay. And so, no, I don't have that. I remember everything that I said. I'm, I Basically, the other day I, I threw some cameras away and I've also just lost my wallet. I'm, I'm, I, I'm crap at remembering stuff. Things that I, um, uh, my girlfriend said to me, obviously I forget all of that. I'm getting lots of talk. <laughs> but I can remember every single word I've ever said about a car pretty much. And I, yeah. Really? So if I, I, I know what you're, you mean though. It's like, oh, I had this brilliant line. I could have said this, I could have said, said that. that. I, I watched that. When I watch your stuff back, I think, why didn't I say that? Why didn't I say that? Yeah, I, yeah, it I would have been really funny, blah, blah. Yeah. Do you know what I, so if I, I remember being on like radio shows and stuff like that when I was a, a motoring journalist and I'd have that and it's just because you're not used to being in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend, my friend Darb hit that, hit the nail on the head when we first started doing stuff. And he said to me, you're funnier than what you are on your videos yeah. because I was shitting myself and not being myself. Oh. It was- You're yeah, the was, same as me. It was difficult. You're ba honestly, we're very, we're actually really similar because like- You've got a I collection. lose my wallet a lot as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, no, I'm not like that. I'm a bit I'm more like my dad. <laughs> but you like, a, like you, you don't buy cars for the look. Now, I know some people who buy the cars for the image you don't because you've got a whole heap of shitters that uh, are just interesting cars. And I'm like that. I've bought cars because of how they make me feel when I drive them, the, the sensations I get through them, or because they're quirky and interesting. You're the same as me, but you have more money to do that. Um, that I do. Um, so yeah, it's, for instance, I wouldn't, the STA would, is a good choice. I wouldn't have that. I'd have a GT3, obviously. Um, but yeah, like, like you say, on an STO, you'd probably, if you were, if you were sensible, have the Performante and yeah, if, uh, no, no I wouldn't have had the STO cause it's more fun. Exactly. Same as me. Yeah. It's got more spoilers. Done. But that, that'll hold its value better than a Performante. You think? Oh, I've no idea. See, I think SV and I think Performante. Really? Yeah. Okay. And you're quite good at this actually, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I think sort of long-term. Yeah, long-term. I don't think that would be as good as a Performante. Really? Okay, but, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, but no, the same things, like some of the quirky cars, like your, your Yaris, like to me, that's just... How come you haven't got one of those? I had one. Oh. Um, uh, and Just didn't get on with it? I, I didn't use it was was my problem and I never gave it a fair go and they're obviously a lot better than the experience I had because I had it and just thought oh, that was all right but then I listened to you and I listened to everyone else say it's unbelievable and it obviously, obviously is but I didn't drive it unbelievably maybe I wasn't driving it hard enough or uh -huh. or what but because on the road I'm so boring so so boring I'm ridiculous I, I stick to the speed limits yeah 
I take my time. I'm careful. Because you get your thrills out around your tracks and stuff. And racing and stuff. So I am yeah. so boring on the road. And I think with that being a road car, I never, like, I like cars which look spoilery and stuff like that. But that car, I don't think I ever drove it hard. And I think if I'd have took it up the track, yeah, then I think I'd, I'd have On that it. track out there, you should just add one for that. Yeah. And the thing is as well, I mean, you can still get one um, because, you know, you talk about cars and investments. There's something really interesting about that car. It's the development cost that's gone into it is way yeah. more than what it costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's way more. Also, it was uh, Akio Toyoda's like pet project. And the Japanese, if it's the CEO's, Mr. Chairman's project, the amount of effort that's gone into that car, if I say, with all the tech on it, um, it had, at the time, it was a bespoke engine. It's now gone into the Corolla GR. Um, bespoke four-wheel drive system, bespoke body shell, carbon fibre roof. If Mercedes or BMW had done the same kind of development on that car, they'd be selling it for 60, 70 grand. Because that, that's the only two-door, isn't it? Only two-door. There's not the normal Yaris. Mm, yes. It's completely different. Completely, it's, it's so different. And the thing is, you do have to drive it fast. Where it really comes into its own is unfamiliar, tight roads, bumpy, British, crappy roads, where you want to go out for a blast, it's a bit unfamiliar. This car's got, it's so good. It's so grippy. It's got like just enough horsepower that it feels like strong. You've got that switchable four-wheel drive system. So you can have it kind of like, um, you can have it feeling quite diffy from the front, like um, a Honda Civic Type R. You could switch it to the back so it feels a bit more rear drive. I mean, it's just awesome. See, that's that's all those things is what I never did. Yeah. Like literally, I just went to work and back at sort of 50 For that, it's hour. not, it's, but having said that though, do you know what? As a, as a When I first drove the car, I could tell within 20 meters, yeah, this is good. Just the feeling of the steering, just the way the suspension felt over bumps. Yes, it was firm, but the car had this whole rigidity to it. There's no squeaks or it's just rigid. Maybe that's another thing then, because I like a, a, a French hot hatch, which is like, just sounds wow. horrific. <laughs> Lots of lean, but they grip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a Clio. I love but, a I Clio. Like, but I like cars like that. They're like super comfy and luxurious. Like I want a, um, do you know what a Toyota Century is? No. Right. After this, Google Toyota Century. It's like what a Yakuza boss would get driven around in. It's just, it's a V12, Japanese limousine. Right. So it would available in UK or JD? No, you, so I'd um, import it. Get one for about, I reckon you can import one for about 10 grand. But it's it's like got, um, it's got little curtains in the back. So you know how like the, um, yeah, stuff yeah, has, like, yeah. the blind that comes up. It's actually got curtains, like <laughs> little, um, neck curtains. It's got, um, to, to rec- rather than, you know how like the Audis and stuff have, and Mercedes S class have the seat, front seat, you can move it forward and it tips forward and a little footrest comes out. Yeah, yeah. With this, you actually fold the back part of the back of the front passenger seat forward and then you just put your legs through. Love it. It's, and are you getting one? I think I might have to. It's always been on my mind, but I've got quite a lot of cars and I don't drive them and I don't have like the, um, the spe- I don't have like the garages and units to keep them in. Yeah, so I'm yeah. constantly having to wash them. I've just put it. Uh, That's it, look at it. Love it. <laughs> look at that. It was, reminds, the, the, Merck did one similar to that. Um, what are they called? A 600 or something? Yeah, the old, oh, the old, old yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but I know what you mean. See, I've just put a, do you know what a Delica is? A yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your most expensive production on a car wow video? It's quite hard to tell really, because we don't spend that much money. Basically, we just hire staff. That's your cost. So you've got these fixed overheads of like the staff, myself and so on and so forth. Um, um, so we haven't like done anything like really grand, like like TV production kind of thing. So it's all done in house. Um, the drag race, like I say, we shoot quite a few on a day. I reckon the most, oh God, we sometimes buy some cars and just do like we bought a bunch of limousines and we um, took them off roading and like basically rode them off. I mean, they they were unroadworthy anyway, but they're like about a grand each. And then when you add in like the location costs, insurance. And stuff costs probably most about five grand production costs. It's a lot for a day, though, isn't it? That, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I've done TV and like TV's like that's per hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One question which I'd love to ask: What's the most damage you've done to somebody else's car? Oh, I don't want to. It'll be to my parents' cars, really. So, what's the most damage you've done to a manufacturer's car? Ah. Uh, so far, I haven't done anything major. Like some journalists have written off stuff. Um, I've done 
silly little parking prangs, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm crap. At par- I can't park. I've done quite a few tyres in and there's been th- times when I've like called up a manufacturer and go, um, you might need to come and get your car because <laughs> it's no longer roadworthy. Usually a big, heavy German car, which I've just done one too many drifting. And, you know, no, it's be fine, be fine, be fine. And to the point that your tyres got so hot, they delaminate, they just separate. So there's been that quite a bit. But generally not too bad. I haven't done any major smashes. But you are very respectful of new cars and rules. and It's quite funny, actually. So people um, watching the review videos, like, smash around at trim, throw partial shelves in the bushes and stuff like that. That's all for a bit of show. And it's like stuff that if we needed to, we can like pay to replace quite easily. Um, and like hitting trim. I mean, if a car can't take a bit of trim being hit, it's not going to stand up to family use, is it really? No, no. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm generally quite careful. So like, I'll always make sure a car's up to temperature before I yeah, accelerate yeah. hard it, it, when they're not mine. The other day we were on a shoot within a, what is it, an Ultimate? Remember yeah, we were yeah, with yeah. the, um, yeah. and the uh, eventual launch. Ultimate? And I, I see it was under a thousand miles. Now actually it's running on the bench, but I just thought I shouldn't really rag it until it's over a thousand miles, just in case it uh, affected anything for the owner, could harm the car. And so basically I ruined that entire shoot. And that was a big shoot. It was well, a big shoot. We spent a lot of money for it. We'd already been out to do it once and the car hadn't turned up. And then we set it up to do it again. And you came out for both of them. We're like, fucking hell, what are these idiots doing? Um, we can't even do that properly. Now I come because it's free crisps. It's free crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Mini cheddars. Um, and yeah, so I, I didn't run it. So I am very careful. Um, with people's cars and, uh, you know, take care of them. Because, you know, I, I, I'd i want to be careful. Uh, people want to be careful with my car. No, no, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised that yeah. um, behind closed doors where people wouldn't even know that yeah. they do get looked after. Yeah, and like my team as well, I was like, well, you, you clean this car, what are you cleaning it with? Don't use that, that'll scratch it, don't uh, clean yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm very like, and this is what I'm thinking about, all the stats and the numbers and what's going to work out in a video. <laughs> And um, has anybody made a mistake when they've been on, like a, a, when they drive their own cars? Has anybody sort of messed up, hit something, nearly hit something? Because obviously now I've done it, I don't know, four or five times. The, the procedure is fairly easy, but you can also go horribly wrong, I suppose, as well, can't it, with people turning around? And- oh, yeah, so we the, we have the, the set rules that basically you go up and down your own lane, don't you? Yeah. You don't go until someone gives you the okay to go and do something. So it's quite regimented. And, you know, um, I do track days. Track days are way more dangerous than this. We're just, it's quite controlled. You're speaking face-to-face with people, so you're having a discussion before you even go driving. So it's way, way less dangerous. Interestingly, though, our insurance is the same as track day insurance. So ensuring you, when we insure your car to go on like the drag strip, it costs the same as if we take it on a track day. Yeah, so and you think about the uh, risk on a track day with just randoms driving all over the place. You've not had an agreement with the people. But yeah, you have your briefing, but you've not spoken yeah. to someone personally. You go, we're going to do this, then we're going to do that, and then afterwards we're going to do this. So there's none of that. And, and they're only actually driving probably for a, a period of five, ten minutes maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one thing I was surprised is how much fuel we use when we do that dra- when we do those oh, yeah, races. Yeah. It's un- it is ridiculous. Like it will go with, it'll come to you with a full tank. We leave and it's on quarter. Yeah. And we've had like five runs up the drag strip. Yeah, I mean, it's, they, it's yeah, because when you're revving a car at maximum performance, it's what, dude, it's just chucking the fuel in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you, like you say, one thing we do do is get them super warm. You, you are like, it will be running for a long time when it before you start. Yeah, so you get the cars nice and warmed up. And then we warm up the tyres um, to make sure that they can grip, so which obviously uses more fuel. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, when when I was a kid, everyone wanted to be a footballer. And I think now 90% of the world want to be a YouTuber. Have you got any advice to sort of people, steer people in the right direction? Yeah. So basically there's no barrier to entry, right? You can do it on your phone and you can be successful on your phone. If you look at someone like Supercar Blondie, that's actually phoned on, uh, phoned on a film. It's filmed on a phone. <laughs> I'm a professional at this, you can tell. Right, so... Um, Yeah, there is no barrier to entry. Look at what other people are doing and what's successful and learn from that. Don't copy it. Find your own little niche and try different things and try, try, try and try different, keep trying different things and something will stick and do more of what works and less of what doesn't, but go out and do it. And maybe it's not YouTube, maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's another platform. Doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube. Try them all and see 
what your content or your personality, whatever it is you offer, which platform works best for you. So what's the next plan? So the thing that I'm doing next is this week, I'm heading out to Denver to review the new Mercedes EQS SUV. So an electric SUV. Does that excite you? Not in any way, shape. (laughs) (laughs) It's the future, Mark. I know it is. And I'm trying to get my head around it. My dad, yeah, it's a long story, but my dad's just bought a a Model X Tesla um, off his head on drugs of, yeah, on his last dying deathbed and decided to buy a Tesla. So it's a Model X, um, ludicrous model. Really? So, so I thought, oh, this is a bit of me. Still not, I'm afraid. Do you know what? That could be, we've got a drag race with a BMW M60, iX M60. Do you want to, do you want to come along? A hundred percent. But the downside is, is I don't know. Oh, we, oh no, we have yeah, yeah, figured it, it out. I figured it but out. But it still you. wasn't that fast. <laughs> Did you go into fully ludicrous Yeah, ludicrous plus, plus. Do you have cheetah stunts? Yes. Yeah, so it's got all the latest yeah. update. Yeah, because it says when you click onto it, it says the suspension will... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you got it. Back. Yeah. All right. It's like, it, Let me have a word to my guys and see if we've got that um, M60. Do you know what? It'd be really nice for my dad uh-huh. to have used that car uh-huh. because he's he, he got sold it. Long story. It's sat on the drive, not done a mile. We've took it out for... You know, we'll have a bit of a go in it, but still. still. We've only done about four miles in it. Still, it just... Nothing. And I'm trying. I am trying. I really am trying. Because I know it's coming, but I'm just struggling. (laughs) (laughs) And for you, it's here, ready for it, or...? It's it's inevitable. You know, part of my job is reviewing cars. So, yeah, and I do like electric cars. They have their place, like round town. For instance, I'm talking about warming up cars. Don't have to worry about an electric car. I'm not worried about heat cycling the engine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I did my own cars. I want to take them all out for a little journey, but I don't want to because I'm going to do a short journey and I'm going to heat cycle the engine. And it's even with the bloody, um, my Suzuki Jimny. And you're still, that goes into your head about yeah. the heat cycle. Honestly, I'm so like, like kind of a little bit mad. Yeah. But I've got a Citroen Ami and I enjoy that. Exactly. So you can nip that down to the shops and that's the same. You've got a Fit 500, haven't you? Yeah. But you won't, it's Cinquecento. You won't drive that. Because you're worried about it, whereas the Ami just doesn't matter. No, no, no. And it's the same thing. It's just one's new, one's old. I'm just hoping for synthetic petrol is what I'm living on. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. I mean, I don't know. How, I don't know how it's going to work. I do not. It's not. We're not there yet. We're not able to do it. I, I don't know how it's going. I think. I think synthetic fuels will be the answer. Uh, so do you think like we'll get to electric where we are now? Cause this is an interesting conversation. So we're, we've gone from petrol. We're going to electric. Lots of people hate it or love it. Yeah. And so we're thinking maybe it's going to come back to fuels. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know about like the ability to get all these batteries produced, what's going to happen to the national grid, how everyone's going to charge all their stuff. However, if I look at how I use a car most of the time, which is just nipping about, commuting, then the electric car, mate, it's quite easy and you can charge it at home. You're not going to the petrol station. It's really good. Um, and you're not worried about heat cycling the engine. They're, they're, they're quite easy to use. There's less to go wrong, blah, 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 blah. What For most people who just drive and drive because they have to, they are a better alternative most of the time, I think. My friend Dab, when I talk to him, he's mad on electric cars. He was always hot hatches. Yeah. had every hot hatch. And now he's onto electric cars. And he says, imagine, and it's, it's the way of thinking. He said, imagine going to bed every night and waking up Filter. and a fairy has yeah. gone to the fuel station and filled your car up. But, but she's also got to have taken some money out of your bank account because the, the electricity is not free and we all know it's going up in price. But it is much, it is, it is better for most people, I would say most of the time. Now the range is good enough. What it's not so good for is, it adds weight, obviously, so the cars are heavier. Um, for a start, which if you're into a car and it's about the handling and how it feels to drive is not so good. The other thing is, is that basically the way an electric motor works is that all acceleration feels the same and it's just amplified by whatever the kilowatt output is of the motor. So where you have like a Ferrari V12 has a different feel and a character to it to a Lamborghini V12. So even though they're both V12s, they have a different feel to them. So you don't like, for instance, a Taycan compared to a Tesla, apart from that change, because it's got a, gear, a, a two-stage gearbox, yeah, no. it's the same 
feeling the acceleration is the same. Totally. Because naught to 60 in four seconds is a lot more fun in that than a Model X performance. Yeah. The way that it drops its clutch, it spins its wheels, it's, it's all this noise. you in the head. It smashes you in the head. Um, whereas actually the way you get pushed into your seat in the electric car is more aggressive, but it's not as dramatic how no, it all happens. Because once you've had that bang, yeah. it's then you're sort of stationary, aren't you? Yeah. You haven't got that yeah. and that. It's like like you say, that bang. But we, we took that Model X um, Ludicrous out and I was thinking, we're all there ready to be sick. And we, yeah. we were going for a Chinese takeaway and yeah. I'm thinking, we've got to do this after the Chinese takeaway because I'm not going to want a meal. And, oh God, I was... When my friend, he's got a Model 3 performance, when he puts his foot down, it hurts me and I yeah, feel yeah. sick. But being as a driver, yeah. I was super disappointed. Yeah, once you're holding on to it. Super to disappointed. Like, yeah, it was super, but for most super people, disappointed. Most of the time, just that... See, they're better for overtaking because you can just squirt past someone so yeah, they're safer yeah, yeah. rather than having to like... Yeah, that's my impression of a fast car overtaking. But yeah. What was that car? It was a generic car. <laughs> no, no, no description. <laughs> generic, slightly sporty car. Probably a hot hatch. No, it wasn't. It was my 996. Okay. <laughs> it was actually just... Let's finish on. Right. What era of cars are for you? I've told you, it's like uh, late 90s, early noughties. That's when I think it was peak car, when they sorted the chassis on them, they didn't rust, they were reliable, they had good amount, good amount of performance, grip, but they weren't, you know, you still had hydraulic power steering, you, they were still reasonably light, um, they weren't overly assisted. Not that I mind the assistance, you know, it helps you out, but it was, they were just, a, they were still analogue, yeah, part of it, weren't you? Yeah, Very much. You're part more part of, it. of the car. The like, for instance, I got GT3 touring outside, and to get the thrills out of that, I'm going bonker speed. Whereas my 996, it's still you can do it, have fun within the limit, like um, the Toyota GR Yaris, tight turn, second gear in the limit, around the limit. You're um, you're you're fine. <laughs> Just drive, don't drive around Oxford. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. No, I've enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. Um, check on the other channel because you'll be able to see uh, Matt's lap, which was extremely, extremely fast. He laps. Did... I did laps though, didn't I? Yeah, well, we're, we're not going to edit that. <laughs> every, everyone else had one lap. You've had about 15. It was like the pin. He's been here 17 hours uh, so I mean, far. I did three, didn't I? And, and one just slow going round. Three. And every single time you knocked a good half a second, if not more, off uh -huh. each time. So now everyone's going to gonna want to do that. They're going to have the same philosophy. <laughs> but thank you for watching. Go check up our other channel and don't forget, like, subscribe, do all that sort of business. And we'll see you next time.